What's the problem, citizen? Oops, wrong number. First Citizen Brown, the mind head of Hill Valley, a man of infinite wisdom and awe-inspiring imagination. Emmett Lathrop Brown had been raised by a family legacy steeped in law, but hadn't set his sights on his destiny until he single-handedly thwarted the nefarious gangster Irving Kid Tannen and his bootlegging syndicate. After this heroic event, immortalized by the grand statue on the courthouse lawn, First Citizen Brown devoted his life to civil and social engineering, using Hill Valley as a prototype for tomorrow's cities today. Mom? Uh, Mom, are you, uh, drinking again? Don't be silly, dear. Booze is illegal, you know. Yeah, Mom. It's just that Dad mentioned... Your father. Why, I just can't get away from his prying eyes. Always spying, always watching. You! You mind your own business, George! Now, Lorraine, this is for your own good. I know you're keeping a secret from me. It's mine to keep. <laughs> Dad! Mom! Knock it off, you two! Now, you listen here, young man. This is an adult matter between your mother and me. Dad, I know, but your way isn't working. You gotta give her some space here. Huh? Where'd she go? Mom? Aha! Uh -huh. I knew it! What is that in your hand? Rum? Gin? A wine cooler? For your information, it's brass cleaner! I have a job to do here, you know! Lorraine? No! Yes. Mom, now the dad isn't watching. Oh, Martin. Uh <clears throat> Was that a flask, Mom? Flask? <laughs> Don't be ridiculous. I I Look, it's okay, Ma. Get a hold of yourself. Oh, your father's right. I'm backsliding. But it's been so hard, what with your brother and sister leaving, and then your father getting obsessed with his monitors and... Oh. <laughs> Let me take care of the flask. Dad doesn't have to know anything about it. <laughs> Oh, thank you, sweetheart. I couldn't bear the thought of facing your father over this. This timeline sucks. Mom and Dad are fighting again. Mom's drinking. It's like everything Doc and I ever did to fix things is falling apart. Time to get some attention. Fun kid? Nah. Who said that? Attempting to destroy public landmarks is a violation of C64. I wasn't trying to destroy it. Take your demerit. Hands up, citizen. Assume the position. Here goes nothing. There better be apple juice in this. 
Uh, why don't you open it and find out? Don't get smart with me! Uh, I knew you were no good, McFly. Officer Parker, what seems to be the problem here? Citizen McFly, ma'am. Came strolling up with a 181B violation in his pocket. Ugh. You, young citizen, where did you get that... that booze? Nowhere. Is he being smart with me? Yeah, he played that attitude on me as well. Could we just fast forward the lecture and just get this over with already? No! Officer, demerit him. Severely. And as for the alcohol, drop it into the decycling bin. With pleasure, ma'am. Now, keep your nose clean, or you'll find yourself in front of Citizen Brown. You are standing in front of the Hill Valley Courthouse. The original courthouse was built in 1885, just 20 years after Hill Valley's incorporation into the state of California. Though the courthouse holds the seat of the local government, it also has been used as a shelter during the recovery period following the 1906 San Francisco earthquake. Most of Hill Valley's community is a result of displaced San Franciscans planting roots after that dreadful disaster. In 1976, the downtown renovation project saw the first major additions made to the courthouse since its original construction. The courthouse was expanded with an additional 128 offices in the new flanking wings and a new mayoral office added to the original clock tower space. Look closely and you can still see some of the original courthouse's details preserved in the new international inspired facade. The original clock tower was dedicated in 1885, with the motion first started at 8 p.m. on September 5th that same year. The clock tower was once struck by a bolt of lightning on November 12, 1955, damaging the clock motion beyond conventional repair. During the downtown renovation project of 1976, the damaged clock was dismantled and a new modern clock was installed as the window to the mayoral office. Look up! You just might catch a silhouette pacing behind the glass. That's First Citizen Brown, pondering how to make your future better. Okay, okay. Welcome to Soupmo, where soup is just... Oh, it's you. This better be important, McFly. Leech, was that Jennifer? Well, A, it's none of your business, and B, seeing as she ain't your chick no more? Yeah. Okay, now this timeline is really pissing me off. You and Jennifer? Really? Oh, is the poor little nerd jealous? Well, yeah, and a little disgusted. That's probably the soup. You got a cold or something? Ugh, it's allergies. I swear, there's a dog hanging out around here somewhere. A dog? Yeah, and the stupid mutt keeps trying to steal my free samples. You sure there's a dog around here? Listen, smart boy, there's only two things I'm allergic to. Dogs and disco, and I don't hear no chicka bow wow, do you? No. Then it's a dog. What's on the menu? Soup. Just soup? And more. What falls under the more category? We got neat loaf. It's made with textured wheat protein. Uh, no thanks. What else falls under the more category? Well, there's the hum burger. It's made from pressed roasted hummus. Do you have any real meat back there? 
Define real. I'm afraid to ask, but what other non-soup food do you have? Anything edible? Well, we have these pea and liver with soy cheese hot dogs. They're new, and we're offering free samples. You want one? Where are the free samples? Here. I keep them behind the counter. Oh, God. If you puke, you're cleaning it up, wuss. I, I can't finish this. Not my problem. What are those things? Those are the liver and peas with soy cheese hot dogs. Ew. You and me both, brown noser. Why are the samples behind the counter? I can't leave them out, dude. There's a D.O.G. running around town, and he keeps going after the sample tray, knocking them all over the ground. A dog? Wait, these samples haven't been on the ground, have they? Geez, McFly, relax. They're fresh, mostly. About this dog, what's he look like? Beats me. He's a smart little SOB. He only comes around when my back is turned. Then how do you know it's a dog? You can smell him? Allergies, dimwit. See ya. Smell you later. Hey! Hey! There's that mangy! Go get him, McFly! Better blue. He's got to be hiding in here somewhere. I bet you're under here. Not a sign of him. What is it now? You and Leech, Jennifer? Hey, don't badmouth Leech. There's a lot more to him than soup, you know. Like what? For one thing, he wields an axe like nobody's business. So you got yourself a new guitar player. What can I say? I'm a girl who appreciates a hot lick. Yeah, I remember. Come on, Jennifer. Nobody in town plays guitar like me. I'm talking electric guitar, Martin. I'm gonna be honest, the ukulele has to go. I can outplay your loser boyfriend any day of the week. You're that desperate to get to first base. Did you say first or fourth? I'd give you two and a half. But first, you gotta prove you've got better fingers than Leech. You ready to throw down? I was born ready. You got a guitar? Never leave home without it. Hold on. You can knock on my door anytime. Hold it, we got company. McFly, what's that was doing here? He says he can outplay you. I told him, there's no one in Hill Valley better than you. You wanna go prove it? The Ring of Rock? <laughs> Don't crush him too bad. Just teach him a lesson.
McFly, that was, that was, that was totally awesome. What can I say? Some guys got it and <laughs> some guys don't. Mm -hmm. You broke my head, Stock. I think I've got a new idol. Come here. Wait, I got a better idea. What was it you called me? A square? A girl's entitled to make a mistake, isn't she? Oh. Hooliganism! Mm. 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 <gasps> Delinquency! Officer Parker! I just caught these two degenerates violating statute number... Jennifer! Daddy! 476D! Open mouths? And tongues! You've gone too far, Jennifer. What's the big deal? It's only hormones. Stop! We don't use words like that in this town. I'll deal with you later, young lady. We're gonna have to have a long talk about the Citizen Plus program. What? Oh, come on! Officer, give Mr. McFly a 476 D's worth of demerits. I'll tend to your wayward yes, daughter. Yes, ma'am. And this is for getting my daughter in trouble with Citizen Edna. Now keep out of trouble. Or Citizen Brown will come down on you like a brick wall. I don't want to go digging through the trash unless I absolutely have to. I don't want to go digging through the trash unless I absolutely have to. That junk looks awfully familiar. Fifty years familiar. I don't want to go digging through the trash unless I absolutely have to. Sorry about getting you in trouble with your dad and Edna. I'd rather not talk about it. Okay, but... I'd rather not talk about it. Right. Your paint's starting to streak. Ah! Now we're in business. I outsmarted you, didn't I? Oh, don't be like that, Einy. Look, Einy, I've got a treat for you. Atta boy, now hold still. See, I'm not such a bad guy, right? Oh, oh, okay. I guess I've won you over. I wish they were all this easy. Huh? What is it, boy? <laughs> Einstein, wait! No! Oh, rabies! Rabies, help! Back! Down! Sit! Play dead! Officer Parker, subdue that beast at once! Einstein, sit! Einstein? 
Oh, if he bites me, you'll be in a world of trouble, citizen. Wait, I know that creature. Officer Parker, that's the stray that keeps escaping the kennel. I thought he was muzzled. I took the muzzle off. You what? That's right, he's my dog now. Citizen, you are in violation of Statute 357K. Parker, demerit this hooligan at once. I'll return this creature to the kennel. Yes, ma'am. Filthy, wretched beasts. Don't worry, Einie. Once I fix all this, you'll be back with Doc and romping through time. Now stay out of trouble, unless you want a visit from Citizen Brown. McFly! Yeah. Hey, Jennifer. Are you still angry with me? Angry? Nah. The threat of being citizen plus was worth it just to see my dad's veins go all purple like that. Great, because I gotta go. Geez, Martin, what's gotten into you? Booze, dogs, necking in public? It's like you're a different guy today. A way cooler guy. I know this is gonna be hard to believe, but I'm the same guy I've always been. It's everyone else who's messed up. And stop calling me Martin, it's Marty. Well, Marty. What's next on the agenda? Knocking over banks? Maybe. What's a guy gotta do to get in trouble around here? I think you're about to find out. You, citizen. Get out of here, Jen. Not a problem. Are you Martin Seamus McFly? Yes. We have a warrant for your detention. Detention? You've accrued over 15,000 demerits in the past 24 hours. Cool. Is it, young Mr. McFly? Is being branded as a criminal of weak moral character cool? I'm not weak. But you are in a heap of trouble. Trouble? Oh my, yes. But don't worry, we're here to take care of you. Like your Citizen Plus program took care of Biff? Perhaps. The program is in need of new volunteers. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. First, let's see what Citizen Brown has to say about your particular strain of antisocial behavior. You're taking me to Citizen Brown? Immediately. Officers, away with him. Yes, yes ma'am. Ma it's about time. I always knew your goody two-shoes A-plus student act was too good to be true. Come in, citizen. Martin McFly, age 18, resident of Sector L, Father George, Mother Lorraine, president of the Junior Brown Brigade, recipient of a full-ride scholarship to Strickland College, winner of the Courthouse Challenge to Portman Award, zero demerits until this morning. The obvious question, Mr. McFly, is... What happened to you? Jesus Christ, Doc, what happened to you? Doc, interesting. You regard me as a doctor, indicating awareness that you're suffering from some variety of mental disorder. That's a hopeful sign, Martin. Of course, I'm not actually a doctor, but I do have the tools to turn you around and put you back on the road to societal normalization. Shall we begin with a few questions to establish a baseline? Whatever. Let's get through this nonsense so I can set you straight. You'll set me straight? Explain. This whole crazy world you've created, it's totally mental. There's all these stupid rules and everybody's acting all weird. My dad's turned into this creepy snoop. Mom's completely pathetic. And Jennifer's kind of scary. And Biff! It's like he's a zombie or something, and it's all basically your fault. So you believe this interview is really more about me than you? Yes. You went to all this trouble just to deliver a message to me in person? Yes. A cry for help, as it were. Yes. No, wait. Tell me, Mark. Is your mother on the sauce again? 
Not where I come from. When I left here, both my parents were happy and well-adjusted. Okay, they didn't start out that way, but that's where your time machine comes in. Time machine? Yeah, Doc, listen to me. You don't remember it, but you built a time machine out of a DeLorean. Why? Well, just for the hell of it, I, I guess. Plus, the steel frame of the DeLorean dispersal, I don't know. It was important for some reason. Fascinating. Yes, yes, it is fascinating. It's, it's amazing, it's incredible. But you don't know it because you've never invented it. You're not the real Doc Brown. You gotta believe me. And this is because... Everything got screwed up when I went back in time to 1931. Sounds like this time machine is a very impractical and dangerous invention. No, I, I mean, yes. What I mean is it's messed up a lot of things, but first, it made a lot of things better. Uh, like my mom and my dad. It was only thanks to your time machine that they ever became successful and happy. So they're happy. But they're not, because you summoned me back in time and somehow your timeline got messed up and everybody else is along with it. I see. No, you don't. Think. Think back. Don't you remember me? We knew each other. When you were 18. I'm Michael Corleone. Incredible. This case is more serious than I'd imagined. The boy has fabricated an alternate reality. No, this is the alternate reality. My reality is the real reality. Calm down, Martin. I'm not blaming you for anything. The failure is ours, not yours. Obviously, there was a drastic flaw in your social conditioning. Yeah, you don't understand. No, I don't understand yet, but I want to. I want to get at the root of your problem. Keep talking. Uh... Take your time. Look around the room. Perhaps something here will stimulate your ma your memory. So that's what Judge Brown looked like. I never actually saw him. Of course not. He died before you were born. He was my biggest supporter. After my wife, of course. That's a switch. Last time I saw your younger self, you and your dad had just had a big falling out over your decision to become an inventor instead of a lawyer. Isn't that right? Uh... An impressively detailed illusion. Keep talking. Okay, take a look at this picture of Einstein here. The dog? Harboring dangerous animals is a municipal offense. Yeah, yeah, they told me, but you harbored this very same animal once, a long time ago. Remember the test run of your rocket car? Einstein landed on the roof of the courthouse. I do, I, I do recall something of the sort, but naturally it couldn't have been the same dog. There wasn't anything natural about it. Einstein's a time traveler too, thanks to your invention. I... Uh, bizarre fantasy life. Go on, you see. Remember this. Carl Sagan escapes. June 13th, 1931. Yes, I remember the incident back when crime went unchecked in Hill Valley. I'm the one who rescued him, and I did it with the help of your first invention, the rocket-powered drill. The rocket-powered drill? Never worked. A failed and misguided contraption with a tendency to explode. Stop trying to confuse me! My whole life has been dedicated to the practical use of technology to shape a more efficient, orderly society. Ask anyone. It's a fact. You can look it up. But you know better, right? Emmett? I... I... Wrong. Do you see this picture? I keep it close by me to remind me of the moment when my life's course became clear. August 25th, 1931. The day I single-handedly captured Kit Tannen, the scourge of Hill Valley. Single-handedly? And not, incidentally, the day I caught the eye of Edna Strickland, my scientific muse and the love of my life. Take a look. What you see there is a young man who understands his destiny. That's not what I see. What do you see? Where'd that 
be. I think it is. What? It's me, and you, the other you. It is me, and you. But how? Harry? It's impossible. No, it's science. Your science, Doc. In this other world, the one you say you come from, am I... am I happy there? Very happy. You've got two great sons. Sons? Yes, and a fantastic wife. Not Edna? Not even remotely. And your invention. Jeez, Doc, you can go anywhere you want to. Anywhere in time. You're the luckiest guy in the universe. And what about Hill Valley? Hill Valley? You know it's got problems. A little bit of urban decay here, a little bit of crime there. It's a normal city. People are happy, mostly. And even when they're miserable, they're not miserable like they are in your Hill Valley. Stop! There are no miserable people in my Hill Valley. Give me a break. You don't really believe... My citizens lead lives of order and peace. Nobody worries. Nobody complains. Only because they're afraid to. Jeez, open your eyes, will you? You and Edna have got them all terrorized. That's Mrs. Round to you, Sonny. Doc, kindly address me as your honor. We worked for over 50 years, my wife and I. Every waking moment devoted to Riddy Hill Valley of vice and disorder. And you dare to claim that our citizens are unhappy? Yeah, yeah, I, I do. I've seen it. They're just too afraid to speak up. Afraid? Afraid of what? Afraid of the consequences of their actions, Doc. You run this place like it's a police state. Nonsense. I can prove it. All right then, time travel boy. You do that. And until you do, I'm going to treat your wild story as just that. A story told by a madman. And I've determined that the best treatment is simply to let the insanity run its course. So, is the interview over? Should I leave? Please do. I'm very busy. I've got a city to run. Fine, but I'll be back with proof. Aquan's proof that Hill Valley isn't the perfect place he thinks it is. One smoking gun coming up. Dad! Pop out the tape, son. I think it's done rewinding. Oh. Whoa, whoa, take it easy. Sit here. Guess I blacked out for a minute there. Fell out of my chair. Fell nothing. Somebody whacked you. Whacked me? <laughs> Impossible. We take great pride in the fact that incidences of physical violence in Hill Valley have fallen to virtually... Ah, ah. Who did it? Can you tell me? This can't be happening. There's gotta be a clue around here somewhere. Dad, that's not one of our bats, is it? No. No. McFly's never use aluminum bats. Curious. Oh wait, don't touch it. It's evidence. Of what? Oh, why would anyone do a thing like that to a nice Sector L citizen like me? What's the last thing you remember? I was sitting right here, copying another incriminating scene onto my... My tapes. My tapes? What happened to my tapes? Stay calm, Dad. Are they on the floor? Do you see them? They're in a box marked raw footage. found my tape yet? I'm telling you, Dad, it was taken by whoever bashed you with that bat. No, it's got to be here. Keep searching.
Greetings, programs. LeBrock 2.0. Anatomical constructs for sciences of all sorts. <laughs> Boring. The monitor's dead. It's not working. It's not working.